you can really tell the Pixie Dusters even know they lost this because the verbiage from some of the Disney bots on Twitter has radically shifted from DeSantis is a big stinky doo-doo head and he's going to lose because he's stupid and he's a Republican to, well, this dismissal was a win-win for everybody. We're not any any fault. We're just we're just acknowledging that everything we did was shit. Yes, that's exactly it. That's it. Under the agreement, Disney is set to drop its lawsuit against Seth Todd, um, and the district will drop its own lawsuit against Disney. Claims and counterclaims from both parties would be dismissed as well. Disney is also set to drop a public records effort as part of the battle. The legal battles were over last-minute, far-reaching, restrictive covenants and agreements, which gave Disney broad power and developmental rights over its former self-governing improvement district of Reedy Creek, which was dissolved and replaced last year. The agreements by Disney were flaunted by the media as legal humiliation and as a move aimed to, quote, mess up DeSantis's power grab over the Walt Disney World area. And they're talking about the agreements that were nulled and void today in court. <laughs> so, um... Out negotiated by Mickey Mouse, a, a headline from Salon Red. DeSantis, uh, a board reveals that Disney quietly stripped them of power. Those agreements are set to be swiped aside as both parties move forward. Disney conceded their last minute development agreements are null and void and unenforceable. No corporation should be its own government. Moving forward, we stand ready to work with Disney and the district to help promote economic growth family-friendly tourism, and accountable government in Central Florida. So, that, I see, there's the win-win. They're going yeah. <laughs> to yeah. support tourism. <laughs> Initial thoughts is that Disney, there's only one kind of entity that can outlast a mega corporation like Disney, and that's a government. Disney would have dragged this on forever and ever if it could, but even knowing that it was down to one claim and it was going to lose, um, it had nowhere to go. It was, it, this was obvious. And you've, you, you know, you've heard Andrew discuss this time and time again. He's the expert on this topic, but we've all gotten pretty well up to speed. There's the settlement agreement. Yeah. I don't think it reflects well on, on, on the Iger administration. But then you have to figure, why didn't he sit on it for another week? Which exactly would certainly, certainly had been within his power. Um, answer: Perhaps he is worried that something's going to happen at this meeting, at this shareholder meeting, that is mm -hmm. going to result in his having to answer questions he wouldn't normally have to answer. And if this were kept under wraps until after that meeting, those would be really awkward questions. But the again. If he th if he felt the usual level of no vulnerability, he wouldn't worry about it because, as we've seen in the past, he doesn't usually have to answer hard questions. Mm -hmm. He might be anticipating the possibility that he might have to answer hard questions. Let me add to that, Ron, too, and, and I think you're right there. I think this is a matter of getting this off the table so it's one less thing to concern an annual shareholder meeting with because Bob Iger's already got enough to contend with. I'm going to give you another big reason I think that this was this settlement was rushed and they needed it to be done and Disney just folded shop. I think, number one, they knew this wasn't going anywhere, as we've discussed. This this was all a show from the beginning, just like this First Amendment claim, which was nonsense. Secondly, and more importantly, and this is on the money side of Disney, and Pro and I have talked about this on a number of occasions. The audience out there probably knows what I'm about to say. I posted this on Twitter earlier this afternoon, and that is this. Disney, some months ago, when, especially right after the proxy fight started, after Nelson Peltz announced, I'm coming back for round two back in October. Um, Disney almost immediately after that announced this big 60 billion, with a B, dollar CapEx plan to build or expand 
parks and resorts over the next 10 years. That's almost double what they spent the last 10 years in CapEx for parks and resorts. There was very little detail when they just said, we're going to spend 60 billion. And they put up pictures of resorts in Disneyland Paris and some hotels, I think, in Hong Kong and Shanghai. Um, one little resort, I think, in Anaheim around Disneyland. Nothing in Florida. But it didn't say exactly how much they were going to spend, where. Are we building new parks? Are we just adding capacity in hotels and resorts? Yeah, there were some cruise ships in there. Maybe that's five or six billion dollars worth. Maybe even ten. Where's the rest of it going? Where's the other 50 going? I'm going to tell you why this was done. Because still at the last meeting and still on the last investor presentation that they released, what, pro, two weeks ago now on VoteDisney.com in response to Nelson Peltz, they had a little bit more color in their $60 billion CapEx plan, but still almost nothing mentioned to Florida. And everybody knows that Orlando, Walt Disney World Resort, is what drives the money machine at the Disney company, above and beyond everything else. They probably wanted to get this settlement done. They were willing to just eat it because they need to go into that meeting next week with a press release saying, here's the major expansion plans coming in Florida. Because until this point, they have been silent on it for two years. So I don't think that Disney plans to invest heavily in Florida. I don't see any indications of that. I think that they're going to put some money into Animal Kingdom. Uh, one of their theme parks that's underperforming capacity more than others. I don't think they're going to do very much with Magic Kingdom, which is where they need to invest the most, mm -hmm. nor Hollywood Studios, which is where they need to invest the second most. I don't think they're going to invest in Epcot, where they have wasted billions of dollars over the last five years with almost no gain whatsoever. Some would say actually a diminishment. Mm -hmm. So why are they doing this? Well, to review, they they... When we heard $60 billion, they reduced that to $30 billion, uh, when we found out what was actually going to the parks. And then we know mm -hmm. that of those $30 billion, the majority is going overseas. And when you right. got right down to it, what we discovered was that it was actually either in line or less than what they've invested in the parks in the past domestically. What I think actually happened here, and I could be wrong, and I'll, I'll, I'm open to being wrong on this. Mm-hmm is that I think that Disney came to the conclusion that if they could settle this in a way that had Florida Central Tourism Oversight District um, agree to not pursue certain legal actions against Disney, that that was in Disney's best interest and they should do that now rather than later. And in part, I think that's because if Sif Todd continued to investigate what Disney had been up to, again, folks, we're in theory, uh, mode right now. If Sif Todd had continued to investigate, what we were finding out was that every time Sif Todd investigated what Disney had done in the past, that it suddenly started opening up all kinds of information to third parties who had no idea they had been wrong, but may have been. And I think Disney decided that that needed to stop and it needed to stop really quickly. And if they could try to get the best PR win they could out of this through a settlement, take the L, but a happy L, that was far better than going more and more into muni bonds and fake utility plants and all of that. They didn't need that anymore. That's so I'll just tell you that this is an unusually large amount of verbiage hmm. for dismissing a lawsuit. The first sentence was the only one that actually matters. So why would you pad it out like this? Because there are times, and this is one of them, when there's so much at stake and so many moving parts that you want to make it clear that with respect to at least the PR lawsuit, no loose threads are contemplated by the parties. We're just like you said, Valiant, we're closing the book on this. We're absolutely closing the book on this. My point is that's, it, this is a very hairy version of a dismissal. Disney agrees and covenants not to challenge the districts. This is Seth Todd, the new district's determination that the district's 2032 comprehensive plan and the amendments to the district's land development regulations, which were purportedly adopted in January and February 23, are null and void. Meaning that you purportedly. Ouch. <laughs> yes. Ouch. Yes. So. Seth Todd, 
Disney is agreeing that Seth Todd does not even acknowledge that this was ever in, in legal abeyance. They're just, it's my read. They're just saying Disney is alleging that they did these things that had some legal standing. We don't, they purportedly did, but otherwise Disney agrees that what they did, the 11th hour, effectively unilateral contract, they shoved on the RCID, sign this and turn over your governmental powers to us. Disney agrees it's null and void. Ron has expunged than, the right term here. Uh, no, cause it's still in the public record. Expunge just means we do, you know, we, it's like taking your stuff out of the, out of the, out of the, uh, the internet uh, archive. Um, that purported, that purportedly is, it, it doesn't really serve any legal purpose, but <laughs> what it does is tell you, it tells you who had the leverage here. Because if I'm representing Disney, I'm not let, I, I don't, what do you mean purportedly? They're saying <laughs> that wasn't even a valid exercise of the power of the of the of the of the district. Of, I mean, of, of 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 the of the previous board. That is such a such a stick in the eye. Ah, yeah, chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> the district shall resolve. This is Seth Todd now. The district shall resolve to begin immediately to review, evaluate, and amend the 2020 comprehensive plan, which would have been put in place by old RCID, pursuant to its statutory obligations and shall consult with Disney and any other appropriate parties during the process. So they're going to review, evaluate, and amend, and all they're promising is we'll talk to Disney about it, but to me it doesn't seem like they're obligated to listen to anything Disney has to say. It continues on, Disney hereby stipulates and agrees that the development agreement shall be considered null and void. So we're stating it again. This acknowledgement is made with the understanding that the development agreement shall have no legal effect or enforceability, effectively removing any obligations, rights, or liabilities purported to have been created by said government. The parties here... <laughs> What's that? You said, you said government, government, the word was agreement. agreement. We're just being careful. Oh, sorry, uh, by said agreement. Um, and the parties hereby stipulate and agree that the restrictive covenants shall That's be considered the, uh, null and void. I, I love that they put the restrictive covenants in here in language because it refers to the the cockamamie scheme that they would transfer government powers into what mm -hmm. was essentially an HOA that covered 40 square miles. Thank, thank you for putting restrictive covenants in here so we can all laugh about it. That's yes. what Bob Iger needs. The next CEO needs to be a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> effectively eliminating any perceived <laughs> obligations <laughs> rights and liabilities <laughs> purported to have arisen <laughs> under these agreements I love that camera lean in oh god <sighs> Uh, oh. this, this stipulation is made with the understanding that such restrictive covenants shall have no legal effect or enforceability, effectively eliminating any perceived obligations, rights purported to have arisen under the covenants. Furthermore, the parties commit to cooperate fully with each other to prepare, file, and record any and all documents necessary to officially effectuate the cancellation of these restrictive covenants. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about the dismissal of the state. No admission of no admission of fault here. No, <laughs> no, we're not, we're not admitting any any fault. We're just we're just acknowledging that everything we did was shit. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. That's it. Defer briefing in Disney's pending federal appeal. This is the First Amendment case, Ron. Of course, that the 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 the, the, the federal court struck down in Tallahassee. Disney's appealed it up to the to the federal district there or to the appellate court there, excuse me. And so now they're asking uh, permission from the or Disney will want to seek permission to defer briefing on the pending federal appeal, pending negotiations on other matters of a new development agreement between Disney and the district. Let me just point out another grace note for you. OK, Disney agrees to seek and the district will not oppose. Mm -hmm. There are three possibilities when you go to the court requesting permission for something like this. 
your adversary ha- is going to oppose. Your adversary consents. Actually, there are four. Your adversary consents. Your adversary joins in the request. And your adversary will not oppose. <laughs> will not oppose is the weakest. <laughs> it, it is a way for you to tell the judge, I wouldn't mind if you said no to tell you the truth. But I'm not, <laughs> not going to ask, but I'm, I'm not getting off the couch to get that remote. <laughs> <laughs> so what it looks like that what they're doing is they're saying that we're going to agree to sit down and work out something new with this new board, with this taxing district that we don't control anymore. We have to come to some kind of mutual terms here. And it looks like the parties in this are agreeing to Disney will ask the federal judge, hold off until we come to terms with this agreement. Seth Todd looks like we're going to go, we're not going to oppose it, like you said. Ron, do you think that means that would, would that give Disney some leeway to say, well, if maybe they don't like the deal that Seth Todd gives them, they can just keep ripping on with this appeal? Is that kind of yeah, what I, I mean? It, it's pretty weak tea because what they're what they're the only thing I could again, if this were human type of parties. You'd say, here's an opportunity for Disney to save itself. The cost of breathing this appeal. Now, this is a fairly small appeal. There's one issue. I mean, I haven't seen the notice of appeal, but there's not all that much in play. It would not be unthinkable, given the law firm involved, that the briefing here wouldn't involve many many hundreds of thousands of dollars and they you know and disney wants to save that but there is also this this sort of a concept that if we can let's not get let's br- bring down the temperature in the room if i'm busy negotiating with you i want to know you're not in the process of preparing a brief which might also take advantage of some concession that I make to you in the course of the conversations. So it's a way of saying, let's see if we can avoid proceeding with that appeal. But it, it's more of a concession to Disney than it is to the state, because the state already won. And they're going to win if it goes any, if, if the appeal continues. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.